Well, hello my friends, here I am again. And uh, I want to do a project that I have several options that I can go with. And trying to debate on which way to go based on time and on looks. Inside the house I have this glass base. It's a lidded base, so it's really not a base, but it's a nice tall glass uh, piece that I really like the shape. And the shape is something like this. And I'm thinking of making something inspired by this. I can do the body as a solid wood and the top as a solid wood with a segmented ring designed to go in there, break it off, and then bring that up again. Okay. The reason why I would make the, these out of eBay to start off with is because I have quite a bit of this material. Double up the length of the drawing on everything. One and a half from this ring to this intersecting point right here. So that would be three inches to double up. And this board is four and a half inches. So four and a half inches, I think would be a pretty decent size to this. Um, so that would be this five, six seven plus this ring I think if I do it from the full board like this I think I will get the the size that I need now when you're doing these and the reason why I said it's different from doing regular rings is because regular rings generally you're working with small narrow pieces of wood and with this type you're working with wider pieces of wood and uh, and you're doing compound mitres and what that means is that the blade has to be tilted as well as your angle but anyway you when I made this sled I made it specifically for this chart right here the upper chart which is a, for compounds and I color coded all the configurations that I thought I would need. Not the size, but the configuration. So if I'm doing an eight-sided with a 60 degree upright would be 11.7 degrees. And I have this orange bar over here, which if I bring this to it, it's gonna give me that. And it also tells me that the blade has to be tilted at 19.3 degrees. There I go. So I'm going to set up, lock up my fence at that 11.7 uh, degrees. Uh, you know, we're splitting one degree into tens when we're doing stuff of this sort. And raise it up, of course. And just like before, you don't have to go much higher than the wood. All right, and turn my blade to So, check this again and see how it works since I've cut this down and uh, verify that it's true. It's a lot easier to verify at this point than it is when you're all done. When you're all done, it's kind of hard actually. Now, don't 
don't know if you can see this, but I'm trying to get these at the same distance on the bottom as they are on the top, like that. And if I look, I don't know if you can see this. Where they're sitting flat on the bottom. Okay. And the top. These cuts are perfectly tight against your inside corner over there. They're parallel with these sideboards. That means that I have a good angle established where I can make all eight of these. So that's two. And you can see that it doesn't take much wood at all to complete a ring that will do half of that bowl. <laughs> that one piece I still got this much left over so easy thing and easy on the amount of wood that you uh, you use up so glue and put it together put it aside and make the next one Now, somebody that I saw doing this, a real, real artist with uh, doing this type of turning with compounds, um, he would do these in pairs, in twos, and then when they dried up, or semi-dried, he would put them in, uh, join them again, in, uh, in quarters then halves and then only at the very end he would put the two halves together after passing them up on the uh, disc sander and these cuts there's no sanding to them uh, well, at least not with me. It's basically make the cut, spread the glue out, both pieces, and rub it. Rub it back and forth a couple of times. And they start gripping, they start sucking themselves. So right now, basically, I have the base of that uh, that base. Now I need to make another one like this, but instead of 60 degrees, I want to make it 45 degrees outwards. So continue with this. <coughs> Set up the saw now for a 40. Uh, for a 45 so 45 degrees the miter will be 16.3 and again I got a color coded that green bar right there is 16.3 degrees and the blade angle 15.7 
and again, they look good. Okay, so I let this sit for a couple of minutes and I put it together just like I did this one. The only thing I did is I put some additional tape uh, pulling it in. So it's time to make the featured ring to go right here in between there. Okay, so a seven inch, seven inch ring is seven times 3.14 equals I need 21 22 inches total and I have enough over there and uh, divide that by eight segments two and three quarter inches each segment 2.74 that's two and three quarters So here's that. Here's my eight segments. I should make a complete circle without any gaps. And I got seven inches. Seven and three eighths to the high point. Now, if I take this on to a bandsaw and cut it up into 45 degree angles this way and this way, I could put a piece of laminate in there and that will give me somewhat of the design that I was looking for. Pivot point is where it doesn't get hit by the blade and on this one it never will get hit by the blade because I have a stop. That's as far as it will go just before the the bolt that's the swivel point. On the back of it I have this little area here that I can loosen up and rotate it to, from 90 degrees to uh, different points so 45 and lock it up it goes over 45 but I don't need it to go over 45 and what I did on this one okay was I set the piece up against there ran it through to the half point and that's what's the only thing that's offsetting me a little bit is that it has to end up exactly halfway on this for it to work so seeing that I don't have a halfway point anywhere I'm going to see if I can uh, maybe put a couple of clamps to give me a stop on this not clamps I'll put a piece of wood uh, held up over there to give me a stop. I need to come up with a stop for that. Now I have a permanent stop on the sled itself but it's made to come up as to the fence and right now I have to figure out is how to stop it to the center of this point and what I got right there right now I think will do it for me. So this was a test piece that I was playing with. So let's go with one piece. Keep this as a reference. So I have to orient it this way and this way. So the first cut, I can go and I can see it over here. It should stop in a center point of this.
together I'll end up with a zigzag design I don't think it's well it's possible for me to get it all on the top as well so I can do it one way or the other I think I'm gonna run it on this orientation one up and one down and uh, that should be interesting so seeing that this step is done so I got all eight of them it's time to go ahead and put the uh, the rings together So to make those fillers, to make the fillers, assuming that I'm going to make the fillers. It's 45 degrees, just like when I did the star. And you cut it and then you find the half point and you make the half point mark and uh, that's what would fit in there so so this is one and five eighths heavy so seven eighths looks like 19 sixteenths three quarters let's see Three quarters to this side. That gives me seven eighths on this side. So three quarters on this side, and the half mark between those two, which is an eight, which is a sixteenth. So here's my center point to this and like before I need that to be lined up with my curve cut and it should be coming out right up to that.
that will be for the next trip to the shop well I have decided to do uh, to fill up both sides I sponged up another small piece to complete this I only had six and uh, so I they're a little bit undersized but I can fix that by taking this down all the way up to the lowest point and uh, there are different options to do these uh, type of rings but I don't want to go into a thing that's going to bore me and uh, take me forever to to do something I want to show the easy methods of being able to do something that you might be okay with or you might like I'm not saying that it's the best way or the fanciest way but it will be a way that will get you to where you need to be uh, I actually uh, between this because I just came back yesterday I did not do anything on this uh, the last time I was here was two days ago um, but I went on YouTube and I started watching uh, a little bit of seeing if I could take any pointers that would be easier or see somebody else doing something that uh, I could come in here and make something that would be a little easier than than what I have seen in the past and it seems like no matter whoever does it it's a, a very lengthy process that is much lengthier than what I want to involve into doing something like this part of mine is I want to get out here start it up get it done and get it over with and go to the next project so the piece will end up being a little bit thinner the ring will end up being a little bit thinner than what I wanted because I'm going to be taking this down all the way up to the tops on these and you can see that I'm taking off almost a quarter of an inch over here and a quarter of an inch on the bottom or at least uh, 3 sixteenths on each top and bottom so this uh, ring will end up being about an inch thick So we're gonna let this stand to the side and dry up. Make up for this shallower part over here. This one is steeper than this one. So we'll do that. This right here is part of the reason why I don't do a lot of segmenting because I really am impatient when it comes to giving it the proper amount of time that things need to, uh, to dry up. Now I know this glue has not dried and yet I want to get in here and true up this face. So I'm going to go in here. And uh, see if I can come up to the top of all of these so I can reverse this and this is set up unconventional inside the outside part of my jaws flat against the 
shoulder of the jaw itself and on expansion mode just to grip these four points that I got in here. I'm gonna run it but fairly slow. See how that is. It's fairly true. So go in here nice and lightly. Well, I'm back, and uh, I decided on using this ring, even though it's uh, less than perfect, but I want to see what happens. So I got it mounted back up, just on expansion mode, on my jaws, and in between centers, and that gave me a pretty good center as far as the piece is concerned. So I'm going to do a little bit of work here and create a tendon a little bit bigger than this to fit into my jaws so I can reverse it and do uh, turning from the inside. Yeah, much better up here. I can establish that pretty well. So right now, I have the middle of the body, I have the base, which is to go into this with some other wood in here, making a ball type transition, and I have the lids to, uh, to go into this. So the thing that I need to do at this point is mount this up and flatten up this bevel that's up pretty true all the way down actually because the size from these points is fairly close to already the profile that I got here so I will have to do very little on this part once I flatten this up completely the fastest and best way for me to do that of course is still on the lathe so I will remove this for now this it's going to have to come into the lathe several times at different points. So right now basically I'm just prepping the uh, 
the components that I'm working with so I can mount them up. Once they glued together, and of course I'll throw all the insides, but once they glued together, then I will start working on the individual, on the foot and putting it all together and uh, uh, things will start making a lot more sense once I get to that point.